says through a natural uh, perspective. I know plenty of people who, you know, can be unnatural and they, they can handle that because they're fine, you know, they're on gear and your body's already recovering faster than the normal person. You can go out and drink and have all that fun. Doesn't mean you're going to be making the same amount of progress than if you weren't doing that, you know. But for me, I don't like to have anything hinder my training. So, we are on our way to the gym. Had to down some oats because I was having, I've only drank, I'm gonna be honest, I've drank a whole gallon of chocolate milk and that was about it. My tonsils are so swollen and I don't know what the case is. I had a fan going on in my room a couple days ago and then I had my mouth open while sleeping. I was like, Ugh. and it just, they've been bad. So, I just, didn't want to eat any foods that were like relatively hard so I've just been sipping on chocolate milk the whole entire day I did the calories it's like 3,000 some calories for the whole gallon and I finished three-fourths of the whole thing the other fourth is in this but it has two scoops of my protein chocolate mint so yeah I, I wanted oats because I need more carbs so I just had that there was no ice cubes because my fridge is being weird so I had to just have that whole entire thing while it was being very very hot so if you guys just were just looking at me when I was eating that in the time lapse it was like super super hot I'm going to go to the mailbox because I'm pretty sure a company sent me out some pre-workout that they want me to try so we're gonna do that right now okay so actually we got three packages one is from Eddie and this is two crazy pre-workouts. If you guys don't know who Eddie, Eddie is, his YouTube channel is Muscle Players. He does a bunch of pre-workout reviews. Companies will send him crazy pre-workouts underground and he'll do reviews on them. And I am lucky enough to be in contact with Eddie. So anytime he has a one that he can, you know, send me, he'll be like, yo, brother, I'm gonna send you some pre-workout. And I'm like, okay. And this is the pre-workout that I was talking about. I don't know if you guys can see it. it says clout we can look at the ingredients later when we get on the road I might just dry scoop it right now just because we're already running a little late and the other thing we have right here is from my protein so
Hey guys, what's up? So I threw a little uh, Q and A on my Instagram, just a little story, and we're just gonna kind of go over those because I have a lot of questions that need to be answered, and some of the things are I want to go into like a little bit of detail. So that's the whole point of this video. Uh, just sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy all these questions. Okay, so the first question is bulking tips. What would I give you guys? Well, first let's take in consideration. Let's hope you're spacing on your meals. Let's hope you have an, a basic understanding of like how many calories you need to have. And then thirdly, just make sure you get enough water. So, so after all those things are kind of in consideration, okay, just fi find some foods, okay? And they don't have to be all healthy. A lot of people will be like, oh, get all these healthy foods. They don't have to be. We can look at, okay, let's get some PB&Js. You can throw some pizza in there, chocolate milk rice chicken if you really want to but that's too much of a bodybuilding thing for me personally i like beef uh anything that has peanut butter you know reese's cups those are my jams you know 900 calorie juice or 660 calorie juice doesn't really matter and where you can find that is in the video i'll put the card right there uh, it will most likely just be in the frozen section in your grocery aisle and it'll just be in this can little frozen juice What's the reasoning behind your foot angle being more forward instead of out in doing sumo? So if you guys take a look at uh, how my sumo stance has evolved over the years between my my 675, my 715, and you know my 770 with where I'm at right now, it all has to do with how I've been progressing, with also, but also how. Uh, I've changed bars, you know, because when I pulled my 675, that was on a deadlift bar, but now I'm on a stiff bar. So all those things had it taken consideration of the whip, how things affect um, my stance and everything else. Deadlift bar is obviously wider than a traditional stiff bar. So the reason why I have to have my feet just more pointed out is so I am not losing balance and I'm just in a way more stable position. Uh, if you take a look at my 675 and 715 and whatnot, my stance changed dramatically. But the whole thing is just being able to find something comfortable. Right now, I've been working on getting a little wider, but also trying to stay in a very, very tight position. I really don't want to have something that happened like last time where, you know, I lose a little bit of tightness, my knee collapses in, and then, you know, I'm hitching the weight up essentially. So. That's just the reason being, you know, is because I want to find, I'm finding a more comfortable stance and I have to adjust between uh, my stances between when I'm on a stiff bar and then also on a deadlift bar. Do I go to school? Currently, no. Uh, I didn't see a point to go to college during the whole COVID thing. I don't feel like spending my money on something. I'm only going to be getting, you know, 50% uh, education, if that makes sense. If I do go to college, that's kind of up in the up in the air uh, I really want to make this stuff I want I want to make this my entire job you know and I'm I'm putting in the effort for that and I have a lot of a lot of uh, just a lot of ideas on what I want to accomplish and what things I need to accomplish and things I'm that are in the making essentially you know uh, YouTube's a huge platform for me when it comes to you know interacting with my audiences where they can get a sense of who I am versus Instagram, it's just, you know, snap and photo and video and they only can get like a rough understanding, but YouTube, you know, I'm being able to talk to the viewer. What are some good accessories for Sumo? Personally, I do RDLs, you know, I've had those in my programs from way back and even with the coach I have right now, which is uh, Hamstring Pappy. And the big thing is not being able to do so many accessories, you know, you wanna be able to have enough but not too much where you're not going to be able to recover as fast, you know? So a lot of people will overthink it where they're going to be over training, over accessorizing and all that other stuff. And they're not being able to recover. So make sure you have some of them, but don't, you know, totally neglect your accessories. How do you fix sumo hip pain? I'm, I'm not, I don't think knowledgeable to answer that question correctly just because I don't know the whole entire story, you know, and I'm not gonna be that one type of guy to say, oh, just do this or oh, just buy that and it will go away. Um, because I don't think that's the honest truth, you know, I'm, I'm not there, I can't give you so many diagnostic, 
diagnostics with it. So um, I'm just gonna say, no, I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna say, I don't know. Collab with David Laid. Uh, I don't think anytime soon. I think Dave's out in LA right now, but I think when I go to Jersey, uh, that's definitely a possibility. But as of right now, I'm just kind of really focused on my training. That is why I'm not going out and visiting all these other people is because I'm really, really focusing on that 800 pound deadlift and just really progressing on my squat bench and deadlift. Kind of sucks, you know, not being able to go out, having all that fun, but uh, it's something that needs to happen. And I think that's, that's you know, I th I'm a perfect example of what it has, has to happen instead of, uh, you know, going out and hanging out with the friends is, you know, taking in the hard work and, uh, you know, kind of just grinding away and bringing in the good results, you know, because I don't think anybody, uh, not everybody is, you know, deadlifting over 765 pounds and squatting over 600 pounds and whatnot, but I am. What type of squat shoes do you recommend? Well, first I would like to tell you, try flats, you know, you don't even need to wear shoes, you can just go barefoot. If those don't work, well then, you know, go into any kind of heel type of shoe. I have Nike Romaleos. They're pretty good, but they're also fairly expensive. If you're just getting into weightlifting, go on eBay and just try to find a pair of used pairs. I know that's like not the coolest thing to say, but at the end of the day, you don't have to spend $190 on a new pair of shoes that you might be switching over to flats, you know? So you don't have to have the best equipment to be the best power lifter. But if you want to spend $200 on squat shoes, you can, by all means. What is the perfect pre-workout in my opinion? And that's something hard to say because it's like, oh, what's the best vehicle for a person? And anybody could say anything, you know? They could say a truck, they could say a van because they have a family. They could say a sports car because they're a single man and whatnot. And that's the way I kind of look at pre-workouts is you can't give it to one specific individual. You can put it in a broad spectrum but uh if you gave me ghost you know i'm going to happily say no thank you because that free workout's not going to be giving me anything uh special but if you gave ghost to like let's say a mom you know who's just works an average nine to five or takes care of her kids but goes to the local uh ymca to go on the treadmill she's going to think that thing's the bee's knees so if you want to talk, I'll give you just five uh, pre-workouts off the top of my head that are pretty good, you know, for an average lifter or uh, not a heavy, heavy stim junkie. I would so go with, you know, Nitroflex, ESP, Elemental Formulas just made a pre-workout. That's Omar Yusuf's company, and that's really good. 110% nutrition, or I don't even know if the nutrition's at the end. I think it's just 110%. That pre-workout's cool. I took that yesterday. Gorilla Mode's honestly really, really good. I like that pre-workout. Sore, there's that, you know. Or you could take, if you want to take it a little step up, you could take Edge of Insanity. And that name has been dull, dulled down, you know. It, version 1 and 2 was crazy, but now we're on version like 5. And it's been heavily reduced, so. Yeah. When is my next meet? So. I was planning on going to Garrett Fears one, which was in Indianapolis, but then I found out it's a deadlift bar and I really don't want to have to convert from a stiff bar back to a deadlift bar because even though, yes, pulling a heavy, heavy number on the deadlift bar, it's a, something about going from the stiff bar to a deadlift bar, but then having to really like realize I have to go back to a stiff bar, you know? Like, it is not something I'm happy about, and it takes like a solid two weeks for me to get used to just to get back from the deadlift bar to the stiff bar. And I don't want to get into that habit of going in there because it's just a mild, wild depression of, you know, hitting a giant number and then feeling like I'm weak, but I'm only on the stiff bar, if that makes sense. So, I don't know. I'm going to kind of continue searching, but I'm not the type of person who likes to do so many powerlifting meets a year. One, because it's kind of expensive. Two, I have to travel quite a bit because I'm very, very far up north in Minnesota. And three, I don't see a huge point because I already see so many flaws in my training. And I know my coach talks about, he's like, that's not a good mindset to have, but it's like, 
for me, I like to win. And if I, you know, going into the competition, not winning, you know, you just want to get the experience, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. But I like to like have going into something with the most confidence. And I don't like suggest doing that because, you know, it's not a good habit. But I, for me, I just, you know, like going into someplace, you know. But until more meets kind of open up and I, I maybe hopefully a bigger meet so I can meet more people and not a small look meet. I don't know. That's that's just the real question. I, the answer. I don't really know. Hopefully soon. Tips to grow your uh, social media platform. I think that is a very, very common question. And I'm just going to give it to you straight. You got to post consistent on multiple platforms. That's basic uh, algorithm. Uh, you don't even have to really have a great personality you know there's people on TikTok who are normal individuals or not even normal just like put out bland content but just because they put it out at such a significant uh, rate they're getting huge followings because the algorithms are pushing out that content because they're pushing it out five five videos a day or whatever so in that terms you could go that route or you could go the route of, oh, I want to make quality content and everything else uh, aligned with that. But yeah, uh, frequency of content, you know, posting consistently on multiple platforms. We're talking Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Discord, Twitch, whatever you think. And you don't have to do all of them, but the three would be Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Then being able to identify which niche you're going into and then being able to develop your personality into that. That's to be successful, but you know, that's kind of out thrown out the window because like I said, you know, there's plenty of TikTok people who have huge followings that don't have great personalities or whatever. What supplements do I take to preserve muscle during a cut as a natural? I think the biggest thing's gonna be just make sure you have enough protein. What are my goals for this year? I would really like, you know, an 800 to an 855 deadlift, a 635 to a 675 uh, squat, and a 375 to a 405 bench press. Those would be amazing numbers, especially for going into that five years of training and hopefully capitalize more on those strength gains for that six year transformation, which, you know, two years is in two years. And I really just want to kind of just keep progressing. Another thing is I want to get around 50 to 100K on YouTube, but I don't know if that's going to be this year. It depends on how strongly I'm able to produce out this content and the amount I will be able to and just about like the quality, you know, what are my thoughts on partying and drinking? I'm not a big fan of it. If you're going to do it, do it. But uh, uh, I like to look at it as through a natural uh, perspective. I know plenty of people who, you know, can be unnatural and they, they can handle that because they're fine, you know, they're on gear and your body's already recovering faster than the normal person. You can go out and drink and have all that fun. Doesn't mean you're going to be making the same amount of progress than if you weren't doing that, you know. But for me, I don't like to have anything hinder my training, which means if I'm going out drinking, you know, drinking is going to hinder my recovery. You know, it's going to slow down muscle protein synthesis and all that stuff. Plus, I would be out drinking, not having enough, not getting enough food, you know, so, or enough sleep, you know, the, you, those are three big things, recovery, sleep, nutrition, those are the big three elements you need in order to recover, and you need to recover in order to get stronger. If your body isn't recovering, it's not going to get stronger, blah, 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 boom. That's why I don't party, you know, I don't see a point. I have nothing wrong with it. If people want to go out and do party, great, cool, but... I, I don't like seeing these people who do go out and party, but then also bitch about, oh, why am I not making progress? Oh, these people are on steroids. Oh, blah, this, ah, uh, blah. It's like, dude, okay, you're going out fucking two times a week, getting shit face hammered, and then, you know, your Monday workouts suck. No shit. You're also under eating, under sleeping, and then you're thinking, oh, I want to take arms. Like, come on, that's the literal teenagers these days and it, it, it's really hurting my brain cells at this point am i natural yes i'm natural if you don't believe me um make a reddit page and like have you guys like donate money to the amount of people that don't believe me and you guys can fly one of your people out to come drug test me i'll pee in a cup for you